Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 379th episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. And man, I missed the anniversary. I missed our six-year anniversary. At least I've never missed a wedding anniversary. I thought I started this show in June of 2013, but it was May 28th, 2013. I had a guest tell me that. He had done some research. So... There we go. Uh, I think the the hundreds are more important. Uh, I'm working on some things for the 400th episode. But uh, happy anniversary to the sales podcast listeners. So thanks for listening. I appreciate you tuning in, subscribing, sharing this as I hit my desk, um, leaving comments, leaving reviews. Okay, it's um, it's those kind of efforts that help. You know, send me an email. Let me know that you're listening. It's been a while since I've done this, but um, if you leave a five-star review, take a screenshot, send me an email. Uh, you can contact me through my through my website or just wes at thesaleswhisper.com. Uh, I'll send you a free PDF version of my sales training flashcards. That's over 50 pages of scripts, so covering the toughest objections. So uh, I type out the objection that you get and a response that you can give, and then there's some blanks in there that you can create your own. So check that out. Um, that'll help me grow. Uh, and as always, you know, if you subscribe, you get it immediately. And then those count towards downloads. The more downloads I get, uh, the more sponsors I can get and other things I can do, things that I'm selling uh, through this show. And it just helps me do more of this for free. Okay. So thanks for doing that. And mentioning sponsors, you know, I had uh, Michael Fossey on not too long ago. He was 377, I think. Uh, he works at uh, my first paid sponsor. So uh, I've been working with those guys now for a couple of months, and um, they're going to be with me for another month. But um, if you go to thesaleswhisper.com slash recruit, uh, you'll go to a landing page. Right now, these guys are in San Francisco, New York. Uh, they're working on a Midwestern city that gets very cold. That's all they'll say right now. But I think you know what we're talking about. Uh, but it's a very unique setup, solution, offering, service, whatever words you want to come up with like that. Uh, this is the third company that the founder has created. The first two were successful uh, exits for him. This one I think will be as well. I spent some time as a recruiter way back in 2000. And what they are doing with matching salespeople, and if you're salespeople looking for a new gig, check them out because it's free to use. If you are a company looking to hire talented salespeople with the intent, the motivation, ready to go, check them out. You're going to save money because you're going to save time. Uh, Michael brought this up in his interview. You know, the average time to hire somebody, so the average time a seat is vacant, is around 41, 42 days, something like that. They help you do it in about 20 days less, so about three weeks. So, if your rep has a, a quota of $750,000, it's costing you over $2,000 a day that, that thing's vacant. So even if you pay the exact same money with them, you're going to save forty grand. But you'll actually save money still in using them. So check it out, thesaleswhisper.com slash recruit. Let me know what you think. Um, I've been adding more content through the 30-day sales growth program, pulling over from the original and updating it. I added about, I don't know, six pages of content on referrals and uh, videos on prospecting, um, videos and audio. I share it through Facebook, uh, through the private group, so that uh, they forced me to make turn audio into video so you can watch it there. You can download it as well and listen. But I uh, keep adding content to it. So as I add more content, I raise the price. So come join us. Come join me. Ask your questions. Let me help you. 30daysalesgrowth.com. All right, check that out. And then, you know, I got so fired up talking about the um, anniversary and how I forgot about it. Forgot to mention who's coming up next, number 380, David Breyer. Uh, he's a branding expert. I've got his big book here that he personally signed. I met him. Uh, we were both speakers in Slovenia back in uh, late November, early December. Uh, David John wrote the foreword to his book. Uh, he has done some big things. Originally from New York, you'll pick up the attitude. We kind of pick on each other. Had a lot of fun. Uh, super smart guy, so stay plugged in. And make sure you subscribe so you get that interview 
as soon as it drops in a few days. Uh, that's David Breyer is coming up next. But right now, coming up next, next, like right now, next, is our guest, Jason Lynette. Let's bring him on. Jason Lynette, all the way from Virginia. Do not hypnotize me and make me cluck like a chicken <laughs> on my own podcast, all right? If We've already been recording for 20 minutes, and we did that five minutes ago, so we're good to go. If that's a deal, <laughs> then I welcome you to the sales podcast, man. How the heck are you? Doing fantastic. Good to be here. So, you wrote a book, you know, Work Smart Business, Lessons Learned from Hypnotizing, and it's all caps, so I got to be bold, Hypnotizing exactly. 250,000 people and building a million dollar brand. What are you talking about, man? A quarter million people, are you, <laughs> have you hypnotized me into saying this? Well, to rewind part of my story back, I was the guy who was originally doing stage hypnosis, so working with audiences around the country from, as I'd say, from Alexandria to Alaska, which is not right because one's a city and one's a state, but by taking that transition- <laughs> Most people don't know that. Though. I know, right? Yeah. Okay, so by taking kind of that experience and then bringing it into uh, originally then one-to-one clients, working with things like public speaking confidence and helping folks to- quit smoking, then of course, then the wonderful reaches, I like to say the world has become a lot smaller. So that kind of combines together all the live programs, all the clients and the digital access programs out there as well. Well, people that say they don't believe in hypnosis, I tell them this story. My, my wife's cousin is a no kidding, straight laced city cop. He's hardcore. He is no BS. Don't don't be joshing him. And we went to a hypnosis. What I was talking about earlier before we hit record, a friend of mine used to do this here locally. And um, got him up on stage. And he did crazy things. Mm -hmm. And at the end, because I knew the guy putting on the show, I said, give him, you know, give him the extra special, because I'd seen his show so many times. So his extra special is he says, He'll touch him on the shoulder, as I'm sure you know. So this person I'm touching, this person only, only this person that I'm touching right now, as long as you are in this theater, when anyone comes up and congratulates you on how well you did uh, in the show, tell them thank you, and then dry hump their leg like a dog. <laughs> See, and what he, I love about that is some people in my community or even <laughs> some who'd hear about what I do, they'd suddenly get concerned about that, to which I'd say... <laughs> Well, context is everything, right? <laughs> context is everything. <laughs> so uh, here's people that were attending a comedy show. And yes. is it any surprise that those things began to happen? Where <laughs> respectfully, here's my client coming later today who's trying to improve her sleep quality while going through a number of surgeries. If I suddenly gave such a suggestion, one, they'd lock me up so I don't say those things. Yes. Uh, but second of all, it doesn't have anything to do with the context. Or let's say I'm speaking to a business group and as I'm often there teaching what I call hypnotic language hacks, here's how you can stack the language in such a way to increase that value of the sale. Right. In that respect, if suddenly if I place my hand on your shoulder and I say those things, everybody would turn to me and go, what the hell is he talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so context, context, context. Context is everything. As long as, long but as, as the audience saying, knows what they're going in for. <laughs> just saying this stuff works, you know. And you know, the best way to describe it is that when you look at the actual definition of hypnosis, it's that bypassing of that critical part of the mind. It's that automatic reaction in spite of our awareness, which that's, Wes, that's something we do on our own every single day. You're driving your car. You're thinking of everything other than driving your car. You still end up where you'd like to go. Yep. You're watching a movie. You know it's all fiction. They're actors and dressing up and pretending. We still get swept up in the story. The key thing is, though, our actual definition of a hypnotic trance is where that internal representation carries more meaning than external reality. So let's simplify that. Here's the person stepping up on the platform who is every bit qualified to give that talk, and yet they're shaking like they're back in their third grade math class. Mm -hmm. So in spite of everything they know, the person knows they're safer on the airplane than they were driving to the airport, yet they're terrified on the airplane. Mm -hmm. So the simple statement is, I don't need the belief or not. Congratulations, you're already doing this stuff. Let yep. me show you how to do it better. Well, and also, you're not going to do anything you wouldn't normally do. 
Because, well, there's, I mean, a, there's a side note to that statement. I'm talking to this guy years ago who had come into the local office to quit smoking. And we're chatting about, you know, being there for his kids as they get older. We're talking about uh, the improved health and getting able to get out and run once again. And the tone suddenly shifts. He points his finger at me and he goes, yeah, but you're going to persuade me today. To which I say, yes, sir, I am. I'm going to persuade you to do the stuff you've already decided you wanted to do, yeah. just haven't done yet on your own, and I'm going to use your own words to make it happen. Mm-hmm. And he goes, oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so <laughs> there are things we don't yet comfortably do, and that's what I help people to do better. There's the right, right. phrase. Yeah, because when, when my wife's cousin is not on the job. I mean, he's he's a not dry humping people? Yes. Yeah, he's not, he's not dry humping people, <laughs> uh, but he's a fun dude, right? We, yeah. I mean, we have a lot of fun, but when it comes to business, you know, he's a serious professional, uh, in a, in a, in a tough city, right? He mm-hmm. just, he doesn't have the luxury of letting his guard down. Uh, and he went up on the stage willingly. I went up on stage before and I did not get hypnotized. So, I mean, you've got to be ready, right? You've got to be open to it, to receiving it. Um, but still anybody that's worried about it, I mean, it, you're going to, if you do something silly it's because deep down you're a silly person and you finally feel comfortable enough to show that side of yourself. You know, so relax, people. (laughs) Well, what you said there also highlights that we're taking what's already there and enhancing it. So as I'm speaking to a business group about enhancing their sales strategy, it has to work from the assumption that one, the product or service is actually good. Two, it actually provides the value that it promises. And three, this person is congruent with those facts. Yeah. And if any of those things are not in place, it doesn't matter what the language pattern or what the emotional intelligence is behind it. All of this has to be in alignment. Otherwise, it's going to create buyer's remorse. It's going to create doubt. So we need to have that foundation of just integrity before any of it is going to be effective. Integrity? Come on, man. That, <laughs> that's, that's the way my grandfather used to sell. This is the social media age, man. Just sell it and move on. It's the, it, we just throw it away if you don't like it, right? Well, the, the better business model I find is that of raving fans rather than the uh, flash in the pan. All right. Well, we shall I see. I, I, speaking of raving fans, I'm going to throw Hydro Flask under the bus. Maybe they're going to turn things around. Maybe I'll get Yeti as a sponsor of this podcast since – April 19th, we're recording this on May 6th. I've been tweeting them a picture of my rusted from the inside out hydro flask. And I'm like, what's up, people? Can y'all help a brother out? <laughs> they don't care yet. And yet he's not jumping on board, right? Some, somebody, you need to monitor your competition social media because there's an opportunity there to maybe make a fan. But yeah. Oh, well. Can, can you help me hypnotize hydro flask? Can I tweet hypnosis? Can I tweet hypnotic patterns and make hydro flask call me back? Well, the benefit is always place the ownership on the individual. So to look at uh, what's the value in them. So yes, you want that new cooler. You want those new devices, yet what's in it for them? If you start with the value first, bring them along for the ride, there becomes that greater value, that greater communication. So tell me that again. I'm typing this out. Place the ownership. (laughs) Place the ownership on the other party as to what's in it for them. You know, the old catchphrase, everyone's favorite uh, radio station being the uh, WIIFM, what's in it for me, to look at what's the value for that response. The way that we would often find ourselves, whether we're writing copy for a website or talking to a prospect on the phone, um, I, I sort of go about this from a, I phrase it as positively cynical perspective to go with everything you have to offer, you need to pivot with the question of, well, yeah, so what? So when we work together, I'm going to teach you hypnotic strategies. Yeah. So what? So you don't need me anymore. That way I can look at you and smile and say, professionally speaking, hope to never see you again and let that be a positive phrase. So that sort of bullet point list of features has got to have the benefits because that's what they're looking for. Uh, I flash to, of course, the most obscure reference I can often pull out, the Dudley Moore movie, Crazy People. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, if you if you what is it? I love the Jaguar commercial, but we yeah, yeah we can't quote that. that. <laughs> if you what is it? If you come in for this <laughs> test drive, we're going to give you a free plant. Someone's coming in to drive a car, and they're giving them a free plant. If I remember the reference exactly, which why it's got to be something congruent to the conversation. It's got to right. be something that people actually want. Yeah, you know, or the uh, you know, say something honest at the table, like uh, not that honest, but yeah. anyway. <laughs> I digress. Man, Anybody not, in business needs to track down that movie. 
you know, my wife will confirm I, I'm a, I'm a 15 year old. I'm a, I'm a 13 year old trapped in a 49 year old's body. But there anyway, uh, I will have to now go watch that again because it's been a while. That dude was funny. Craziness. All right. So I love the positively cynical. So I created cynical selling and Ooh, some nice. of my, some of my customers are like, no, I don't like it. And others are like, oh yeah, I dig it. You know, but that's really, I kind of turn it around as like, oh, you know, like you wouldn't be interested in, you know, growing your revenue 18% in the next quarter and, you know, reducing churn by 4% and, you know, lower your cost by 22% while you do it. Would you? Uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, you wouldn't be want, willing to do something about it this quarter, would you? Well, why not? Right. So kind of turning it around, making them go, yes, yes, yes. Oh, well, well you okay. See what's, I mean, what's effective about that, Wes, is whatever you do right now, and especially everybody listening out there too, right now, do not think of a purple elephant. The most important thing I need you to do right now is not think of a purple, purple elephant. And even better, do not put the purple elephant behind a white picket fence. Don't put a little yappy chihuahua dog next to it and don't hear the sound of the dog barking. Don't do those things. <laughs> and there they all are. So you're making use of a little nuance of language, which to simplify this with the easiest science behind it, the brain is something that we've begun to understand more and more every year, thanks to neuroscience and research. Uh, language is something that people had to invent to try to figure out the world around us. And language invented that ability to negate something, to remove something, when technically everything you've ever seen, heard, felt, or experienced is there somewhere stored in your mind, as documented, of course, in uh, Disney Pixar's Inside Out. So to look at the fact that you're telling them, you know, if you don't want this, which is triggering that part of the mind, yes, in a sales world, we could say that's a bit of a takeaway sale or label it. I'm, I'm less concerned about the labels and more concerned, can you actually put this into use? A uh, friend of mine, uh, I have not had the guts to do this myself, but it worth, is worth the story, working with people to stop smoking. Uh, to walk up to the person with the cigarettes who's out there smoking and go, hey, look, I know you're not ready to quit, but this is what I do. And when it's something you might be interested in, or you know someone who, if you know someone who is interested in quitting smoking, here's my card, give it to them, since I know you're not interested. And his strategy was to then turn and walk away, at which point they'd always call after him. So to look at, again, what's in it for them. And again, what's beautiful about that strategy is that you're letting that person now defend their decision. No, wait, I do want to increase things by 18%. No, I do want to reduce that churn. Great strategy. I like it. So whatever like you do, it. don't use that right away. Don't, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I like that you like what I'm saying. So, you know, uh, enough about me. I want to know what you think about me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. In, in your training, I mean, you're, you're not doing training, like teaching people how to hypnotize, right? You're, but you, you're helping them master the English language, basically. I always say, you know, words mean things. And people, people use weak words. I used it in my example last week in my keynote. How, you know, an example I always use is, you know, you ask me, you know, well, Wes, how much is your software? And I say, well, Jason, you know, it's, it's normally $3,000 down and $800 a month. And you reply with? Well, how long does that go for? How long does it go for? Or yeah. that keyword normally. Normally, normally it's $3,000. And a typical prospect would, would reply, come well, on, what man. Is man it <laughs> what is it now? Right? And I go back to my boss. Our prices are too high. And it's because of these weak words that I'm using mm -hmm. and I don't even know that I'm using. So is that kind of the best way people realize the first phase of it comes down to something that's uh, not even language as much as I'm out there talking about hypnotic language hacks. It comes from that place of emotional intelligence where, and I love the phrasing that you have that day where by accident you feel good. You have that day where by accident you're communicating better with other people around you. And this is where we'd often get in our heads by thinking, did I eat something differently for breakfast and I did a, get a different quality of sleep last night? Why do I feel better? And we have those good days, we have those slightly off days. The first phase of this all comes from building that foundation of, again, that emotional intelligence to harness that state of mind on purpose. So what is it we can do when we're actually in those effective states, these effective states of mind where we're closing the sale, we're communicating great with the client, you're on the platform giving that keynote and that's become this amazing symbiotic relationship with that audience to actually start to build that skill with what we call anchoring 
which is something people do all the time of connecting a sensory state to another sensory state to learn that you can call on that confidence on purpose. You can reproduce that state of mind on cue. The same way that you get in the car and a song comes on the radio from 20 years ago and it reminds you of everything you were going through when you first heard that song. You walk into a room and you smell something and it triggers all sorts of sensory memories. So I don't call it fake it till you make it. I call it retraining that neurology to draw out that state of mind on purpose rather than you know, so often people are going into these sales contracts, people are going into this speaking opportunity thinking, well, we'll see how it goes, but instead to harness that on purpose. So I say that rather than necessarily doing hypnosis or hypnotizing your audience, I'm sharing with you those things that any decent hypnotist would look at this and say, those are our standard strategies. But when we pick them up as effective communication points and bring them into the business world, we're able to enhance those relationships, sharpen our influence, and again, result in those raving fans of what we do. Yeah, the, the example I gave last week, so it was the theme was golf. This, this event was at TPC Sawgrass Marriott in, in Jacksonville. And I told him, you know, all, all golfers, and so obviously with Tiger Woods winning the Masters, he's, he's top of the golf uh, conversation right now. You know, I said, look how every golfer, whether it's a, a 52-foot putt or a two-foot putt, they have that same routine. They, they line it up. They, they look at it from front, back, middle, and side, you know, blah, blah, blah. They, they, they imagine their line. They take their warm-up stroke, left foot, right foot, left hand, right hand. And you're like, dude, it's two feet. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can hit it with a pool cue. Come on, what's the deal? But is that kind of the process, kind of the yeah, and, centering and, their emotional intelligence, or at least their emotions, right, to right. get in yeah, that winning and, routine? In the Work Smart Business book, there's a whole chapter called Build Rituals. And it's to go beyond habit, to go beyond behavior, and instead look at things that we do as rituals. So there are people who do the same exercise routine because they're going for that progressive overload and really strengthening the body over time. There are people who, if it's their faith, they're at a church every single Sunday or whatever specific day of the week their faith uh, calls on. So to look at those things we do in our businesses, these are those rituals. These are those foundational components so that before I turn on the camera for producing media for whatever project, before I connect the microphone, before I walk on stage, here is that consistently, consistency that I'm doing. The way that you know, we have these great devices that are supposed to make our lives better, laptops and uh, smartphones and tablets, and yet sometimes your phone can't make a phone call. Sometimes the apps just don't open, and we could spend all sorts of time, energy, and money trying to figure out why it's not working. When sometimes the simplest of solution works best, shut the thing off for a minute, power it back on, and then the software loads in the appropriate sequence to start to think of our physiological states of influence from the same perspective. What are those things that I can consistently do, not just before the event, but also after to capture that state of mind and call on it on purpose? But yeah, exactly right in terms of the athlete. The way that sometimes the golfer, the baseball player will step out, sort of break that state and step back in with that greater resource, and that's when they do it. And rather than hope it's a good day, instead do it intentionally and on purpose. So you're telling me throwing my phone against the wall is not the correct thing to do? when it Depends on the warranty you have, but possibly. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? Oh, my gosh. Uh, but I do want to know how to hypnotize my kids. Now, look, here's the deal. I got seven of them. So I, there's no warranties or you're, you're free from any risk. Okay. Cause one, I read like in the book, once you have six or more then any trick is, is legal, accessible, moral, ethical. Cause I mean, I'm just <laughs> outnumbered and I'm tired. Okay. Can I, so after this, you're going to give me some tips, right? Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Good. Which again, ownership on the individual, the simplest classic strategy is that of the double bind, uh, to which here's a day that I had a friend in town, we were teaching a class together, and it came over for dinner, and here's our son, who can be a little picky sometimes around dinner, which strategy number one, if you, similar to your sales uh, dialogue from earlier, if you change the names of things, things begin to look differently. So when we would put all the food for our kids on the plate, Uh, They would eat the stuff they wanted first and leave everything else behind, which would be empty plate piled with vegetables. And we decided to make dinner a little classier at home 
because you know what? We're now going to do what they do in fancy restaurants. We're going to have courses. Oh. So we're going to start with the vegetable as a course. That way you can really enjoy the next part. And rather than realize, of course, we were at the time manipulating at the time our four and six-year-old, uh, they were thinking we were doing something rather fun. The same way that, again, in sales, as we're presenting the pricing of something, well, the program is usually this. However, you're able to sign up today for an investment of that. And to make it friendlier on your budget, you're able to sign up on just a two-month payment plan, which just runs automatically, which they go, oh, okay. The framing of it is what really presents that. So the power of those individual language patterns. The other strategy there was, um, uh, do you want to have the vegetables first or do you want to have them with the next part of it? which right. is, again, that classic double bind of this one or that one, leaving out the third option of I'm going to leave them on the plate because I don't want them. Yeah. Positively manipulating children uh, is something that we can condone if it's for their own good. <laughs> <laughs> but again, to look, that, yeah, to look at that in the shape of business, of um, you know, th there's a challenge that often people would have in the hypnosis world, which would that the individual client comes in and they end up talking about the problem for so long that suddenly you look at the clock and go, oh, man, we only have 10 minutes left. Oh, what do we do? We've run out of time. And instead, it's where as soon as I set the frame as someone walks in the door. So great. We're going to talk about what it is you'd like to change today. I'll then explain hypnosis, what it is, what it isn't, and then we'll get to work resolving this thing as early as today. Sound good? Yes, I've now got that buy-in. I've now built the roadmap and I get to direct the pacing of the process to actually then get in and do the work rather than the old model of let's now sit and build rapport talking about everything other than why you're here for the next 45 minutes. And respectfully, let's not spend an hour convincing each other this thing is impossible to solve. Let's move toward the result and bring us both along for the ride. So you're saying, all right, if I understand this, uh, because yeah, people... There's a whole lot of this build rapport, build rapport, but, uh, you know, and I talk about, I've got my better prospecting system, right? Bonding, empathy, trust, and rapport. I mean, it's all important to a degree, but people, a lot of salespeople turn into professional visitors. Right. Right. And almost like they think they're a therapist, let the person just rant and blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, that was a great meeting. What's the next steps? Oh, right. I don't know. But like, they got a lot off their chest. So I feel like they really trust me. Like, this is not, this is not a, this is not a swipe at social media. Uh, yet it, it's a swipe in terms of a concept. Why are most businesses on Facebook? And the answer is because they think they're supposed to be, as opposed to having a specific strategy. Why are most people doing that rapport building, the matching, the mirroring, and so forth? Because they learned that's what you're supposed to do, and time in the room equals quality of relationship, when meanwhile moving towards that common shared outcome, uh, which I'll give a quick uh, reference here. If you go to the URL rethinkingrapport.com. I actually did a TEDx talk about a year ago, actually a year ago about this month, which was specifically on this concept of let's use the strategies to move towards a specific outcome. And if we're not moving toward that specific outcome, that's where respectfully I am intending to break rapport to then build the rapport in a much better direction. So Rather than just continuously going, oh, we like each other, let's keep talking about, oh, you have that car, I have this one, oh, my sister has that one, which is not why we're meeting together today. Mm -hmm. Let's use these to build a propulsion system towards the desired mutual outcome rather than just build a friendship because that's what we're there for. They've, they've contacted us because they had a specific business need. So let's use our strategies of, of communication to move toward that in a much more directed path. Yeah, very cool. I just pulled that up. All right, I will link to that YouTube. Um, but so, so I love that. What would you say time in the room does not, what was it? Time in the room does not necessarily equal quality of relationship. There you go. Because at the end of that, you leave by, well, I laugh at this because years ago, um, I saw a Jordan Belfort Wolf of Wall Street, uh, you know, training at one point, And he has this extended story about, trying to buy a Ferrari and they wouldn't sell it to him. Right. And I'm laughing way too hard at the back of the room at this because I had the same story, but it was about a used Honda Odyssey minivan. <laughs> <laughs>
they're not, they're running every bit of sales strategy going, you want something safe, right? I'm like, yeah, this thing has the highest crash safety ratings in the industry. Yep. Oh, you want something with entertainment features, right? Yeah, you have three of them with the widescreen flip down DVD player for my kids on long trips. Hey, can I get your Wi-Fi code? I'm going to be wearing headphones. Let me know when I'm ready to sign contracts. Yep. So see people where they are. It's where too, as long as you understand your process back to rituals, even more so I talk about the principle of building systems. So years ago, I kind of scripted out an outlined process of a sales consultation. Yet, if you're building value in advance, nowadays, I had this earlier this morning, a private client who was calling in, oh, I'm calling you because this person referred to me. Oh, cool. Have you watched the videos on my website? Yeah, I've watched them all. Okay, great. When we work together, here's the rate, here's how it goes. Okay, perfect. When can I get started? And by hearing where they were in the process, we were in and out of that uh, in a very polite fashion in about two or three minutes. Yep. Rather than, no, I have to talk to you for 30 minutes about the issue, we'll, we'll save that for later, but clearly identifying where you were. So back to that emotional intelligence is also about opening up that calibration, seeing where someone is, and then using that again as the momentum, as the threshold to get that change in motion. Yeah. I love it. And, I, you know, going back, it, it kind of, you, you talk about it quickly, but I, I've had a program called, I just, it's called the sales agenda, the sales agenda.com. It's like, have an agenda right. for your time together. Uh, and if you can't set it by ahead of time, you, you've got to control it right in the beginning, right? Because otherwise, I mean, the customer might just talk through their whole pain. And then basically like, like if I just show up to you and I vent for an hour, I'm kind of going to anchor like these negative feelings to you. Right. Mm -hmm. It was like that whole time I was just venting and I'm angry and I still don't have a solution and I leave. It's like, well, he was okay, but man, I'm still going to feel kind of crappy. Right. Yeah. And I share a bit of an influence strategy on this too, which the disclaimer to this is, is this method that I'm about to share with you and your audience is this method alone going to create the sale, advance the relationship, build the rapport? Is it going to do those things simply because you're using this technique? The best answer I can give you without any other criteria is maybe. Nice. However, what is the strategy going to do? It's going to have you working as the whole work smart branding that I put behind everything is to work with purpose, to work with focus, to work with intention. So it's going to put specific intention behind your actions and your communications. So the benefit becomes is, is not only potentially influencing the person you're speaking with, it's also influencing you. And it's also allowing your communication to become more congruent. We can talk about anchoring in terms of specific words or in terms of specific, you know, we talked about smells or even sensory feelings. We can also talk about anchoring in terms of spatial awareness. So if I'm ever talking about a problem, if I'm ever feeding back the dialogue of what the business I'm speaking to, what the association, what their members are often facing, you know, my arm is all the way off to a side and I'm referencing as if I'm pointing to that thing all the way over there. The formula that I'm using whenever I'm talking about the negative is distance and dissociate. I'm gesturing as if it's something all the way off to the side. And for a little bit of extra credit, I'm using my right arm all the way off to my right side, which is your left because we're mostly a culture that reads left to right. So now it's in the past. If I'm talking about your future, of course, now I'm gesturing off to the future. Yet if I'm referencing now and we're in a dialogue about how would you like to feel today, my hands are gesturing in such a way that's not necessarily just about framing me to project that positive state on me, but it's really framing the communication that you and I are having together. So I'm spatially placing past, present, and future and making sure that I'm putting that let's call it this way, the instant gratification of you feeling good and knowing that things are moving in a better direction. All of those gestures are directly between you and me in the present, right. which the benefit is it's now, dis again, distancing and dissociating. It's placing that negative stuff off to the past where it belongs. It's a difference between if I'm holding an object in front of me, this thing scares me versus that thing scared me that little bit of distance just triggers the language in the mind to recognize here's where I am now and here's where I can, what I can do about it. That's so often, for those that go to that uh, TEDx link, Rethinking Rapport, 
the number of times you ask somebody an outcome-based question and they answer with backstory. So how would you like that to be different in your business? Well, you know, last year, what we were running into was this. And I'm using my gestures now to put that in the past. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. But how would you like that to be different today? And I'm framing in front of me. So right. drawing out that roadmap, which for those that, again, obscure movie reference number two, Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, the Will Ferrell race car movie, <laughs> the opening scene, he's being interviewed on camera awkwardly with his arms in different postures going, I don't know where to put my arms. Where do I put my arms? Now our gestures are becoming specific. Now our gestures are now telegraphing the communication and influencing the story as to why we're actually having this conversation. So hypnotic influence is not just about words. It's about states of mind. It's about actions. It's about the entire communication. Yeah, but Jason, man, I, I don't like scripts. I mean, I feel all bound up and, and cold. And I just, I'm just not responsive. And, and, you know, this all just feels too manipulative. I just, I don't like to just go with the flow, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a sociable person and, and people tell me I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. And it's really about harnessing those abilities you already have that make you a people person and helping you to do it even better. And the truth is all communication in some way is influential. All communication is persuasive, even if it's the fact that you and I had to reschedule a couple of times to connect here today. And all communication is manipulative in some way, even if it's picking what movie do we go out to, where do we go out to dinner? So if all communication is doing this, my premise is you might as well do it effectively and with integrity. So let's highlight the strengths of what's already there. This is that greatest benefit of so often, let's say I'm speaking to an insurance group as I was a while ago, and those people in the room were already those top performers. The same as if I'm working privately with an athlete, uh, someone doesn't pick up the golf clubs and go, oh, I need a hypnotist. No, they go, I need a golf coach. Yet when they find themselves standing over the ball, and they're anxious, and they're nervous, and they're playing the ritual of every time the ball went into the water the last time, rather than swinging every stroke to the best of their abilities. That's where I can be effective with them. So, so often, I'm already speaking to those people who were already effective, and if we can sharpen that strategy a little bit more, they can build stronger relationships, increase their sales, and grow that client base, and just become happier at work while they're at it. And, you know, little, little tiny baby Jesus, he really appreciates when you dealt with integrity. <laughs> I need to in there. Why do you always say little baby Jesus? I like my little baby Jesus. <laughs> anyway, I told you I'm 13. Did you and I just become best friends? I think we did, yeah. Man, I'm 13 yeah, years no. old. You knew that about me, and I you're know. manipulating me, all right? We've been moving my office this month, and it's constantly playing the Step Brothers game of, we have so much room for activities here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I need this because my wife, she's not a movie buff, man. I'm, I'm home alone, although I'm never alone. Yeah, uh, I got my I got my iPad, my my Bose headset, and I'm just I'm vegging, man. But I, I got one I got one kind of off the ear so I can hear the screams and the taunting. And so, you know, a, a 90 minute movie takes me about three weeks to get through. But yeah. hey, I do eventually get through it because I'm committed. You know, I'm yeah. a professional. Well, you, you bring that up in terms of looking at what is it we can do to harness states of mind from other strategies. So, uh, for example, there's a free gift I was going to give to your listeners here that it teaches the ability to call upon that peak performance in the zone confident state on demand. And what I'm looking at when I'm working with people is not necessarily use this technique every single day for the rest of your life. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Whether your choice of movies is the science fiction of going with the classic of Star Wars, or if it's someone like me that a little bit more prefers Mel Brooks' Spaceballs, uh, whether it's the Force or whether it's the Schwartz, it's to take those skills that you already had inside of you and realize this is what was already there, and here's how we sharpen it. So for those that pick up that uh, free program that I'll share here as a gift, the benefit of that becomes is the more you make use of it, the stronger it works for you, and the stronger it becomes for you, the less you're going to need it as a technique. Because now you're not necessarily have to thinking exactly what you mentioned of, what's my closing script? What's my pattern for that bit of objection? The difference is now we've opened up all of that calibration to truly be in the moment and feed off of what energy is there, what energy needs to be shifted, and use it all in a much more organic way to build that relationship. Yeah. 
Yep. The old adage is, uh, what, rookies rookies do it till they get it right. Professionals do it till they can't get it wrong. Mm, nice. All right. So be committed. So, yeah, you mentioned some, uh, some goodies. Uh, I've got some URLs here. Um, got your website, of course, right? JasonLynette.com. So yeah, which uh, for JasonLynette.com, you'll love this. The easiest way to go there is you can spell it six or seven ways incorrectly. It all redirects to the right place. Very nice. So just You're take a good, educated man. guess, and you'll end up at JasonLynette.com. Yeah, the program that I was mentioning, for those of you go to WorkSmartBusiness.com forward slash confidence. That's where you can actually download a free 15 minute hypnotic audio program that'll help you to turn on your own peak performance state of mind uh, to break out of whatever funk may have been there in the past to step into that best version of you. The cool thing about it being an audio is you can listen to it as many times as you want. But again, the more you make use of it, the more organic it becomes. That website again is worksmartbusiness.com forward slash confidence. And that's a free gift for listening in this week. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I've got links to four things here. So your website, that hypnotic program, to your book, and uh, your TEDx talk. So if y'all forget all of that, just go to the saleswhisper.com, type in Jason's name, find this episode, and click through. Very nice. Well, Jason, I'm glad we were able to reschedule, and uh, good luck on the move. And uh, man, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely. This has been a blast. All right, man. Go sell something. How you like that, huh? Persuade with integrity to make every sale. Sell on purpose, persuade profitably. Those are the headlines and subheadlines for his podcast episode on as a blog post on the saleswhisper.com. So go check that out. Um, I love what he talked about. You know, I've got his book here. Uh, he also gives you a free audio version of the book when you get the book. So uh, make sure you check that out. Work smart business. Uh, lessons learned from hypnotizing 250,000 people and building a million dollar brand. Um, what you see, what you hear is what you get. Uh, really good guy. Great conversation. Um, I'm a big fan of, like he says, language. I always say words mean things. Uh, but as he goes deeper, right before language, there's emotional intelligence. So your words mean things, how you set things up. But if you're not squared away, you won't use the language that you need to use, that you know you need to use. Um, it's just like golf. You go to a lesson, you work on what's what you're doing wrong, you, you hit it perfectly on the range with your you know the golf pro there, but when the pressure's on, you revert back to your old bad ways because you're comfortable with it. I think people are afraid of success. I've, I've asked guests that before. Some agree, some disagree, but for whatever reason, you know, we hold ourselves back. But words are so important. The words you tell yourself, the words you say to others. All right, so go back and listen to this. Take some notes. Apply it, right? you got to write this stuff down and apply it. And so that's why I say, you know, join something like the 30-day sales growth. I think it's the best one out there because it's still small, which means you ask your questions, I'm going to answer them. Okay? It's not a bunch of administrators filtering things. You're going to get me. But I'm in a coaching program as well. Uh, in a, I don't know, middle of June. Well, wow, coming up pretty soon. Um, I will be in uh, Ohio working with some folks. Yeah, actually, I leave a week from now. But uh, working with some folks, I'm trying to grow. Always trying to get better. Uh, and I see how few people hop on the calls, how few people ask questions. And it's like people join some, it's like joining a gym, but then not using the weights or showing up and just sitting on your phone, kind of coasting through, you know, treadmill for 30 minutes and going home thinking you got something out of it when you literally did nothing. So you've got to be ready, willing, and able to put in the work. And when you have somebody with you, helping you, somebody that's already been there, you're going to get better results. It just is. That's how I'm able to train four to six days a week in jujitsu, even though I'm sore, even though I get frustrated, even though I feel like my progress has stalled a lot of times. I still learn something literally every day. Literally every day, there's a nuance, a subtlety. And I'm like, man, I'm glad that one thing right there makes me glad that I came. 
And so after having that now, literally every day uh, that I've trained, which is average about five days a week for two and a half years, which is a lot for somebody almost 50. <laughs> so, um, but literally experiencing that, I now know that that's going to happen. Intellectually, I know. So I get up and I go, even when I'm sore, even when I got aches and pains, I get up and I go because I want to learn that one little thing. So staying plugged in is what's important. Doing this with your peers. I learn probably more from the other students. Some are my exact same rank. Maybe they're able to just train a little more. Uh, one guy, he's a Marine. He's able to literally train three days a week, or I'm sorry, three times a day. And he trains probably five days a week. He's younger than me. We're the same rank as far as like officially through the school, but he's, he's better than me. He, he knows more. So I learn even from up here, but I learn from the other students, the purple belts, the brown belts, you know, I spend a lot more one-on-one -on -one time with those guys. Now, granted, we all have the same instructor. He's guided us all over these years. Some guys have been with the same instructor, Ricardo, for over a decade. So he's the impetus for all of this. But the one-on-one, -on -one, the little questions, the subtleties, you know, I'll find Ricardo is a smaller guy, 165 pounds, probably 5'10". I'm 6'2". You know, I was 235. Now I'm 217. Yeah, baby. Intermittent fasting. Let me talk about that next time. But, um, you know, being... Now, we're about the same age. He's 53. I'm 49. Uh, but he's smaller. He's more flexible. Done this for 30-something years. Whereas I'll train with other guys, late 40s, early 50s, over 200 pounds. Usually I'm rolling with guys 230 pounds, 240 pounds. Because our body types are more similar. We're going to learn different things. So I learn as much or more from the other students. Same thing in the 30-day sales growth. I'm there all the time. I'm there answering questions. But there's other motivated professional salespeople, entrepreneurs, business owners in the group that can answer questions for you. Okay? So it's it's that type of peer-to-peer -peer support that's going to help you grow as well. And like I said, uh, I keep raising the price as I add content, but it's still very low, and it's still a one-time payment versus an annual subscription. All right? Because the early birds um, are going to benefit okay because you put your trust in me even before I, I fully populated it with all the content i'll never be done so i'm always adding supplemental things into the group but the formal training the videos i've done in the studio the workbook as i keep adding that once it's all built out then it becomes a subscription so do yourself a favor get in now all right 30daysalesgrowth.com private coaching i've been slowly talking about that um on these episodes but some people it's not right for whatever reason you're in a different place and i get it you don't need just sales training maybe it's processes it's hiring it's just how you think maybe your company is a little bit bigger you need things to be private i get it that's why i offer some private coaching you gotta just go to the website hit the contact us and we'll set a time to talk to see if it's right for you uh, i start out with a 90-day program and then we take it from there okay so it's no long-term agreements we're not going to get married. You know, we're going to date before we get married. And uh, But in that, I offer unlimited access to me. So you get my cell phone. If I'm not on a call, I'm taking your call. Okay, if I'm on a call, I can usually text, hey, give me 10 minutes, give me an hour, and let me get off this call, and I'll call you back. So it's scheduled calls. It's recorded calls. It's impromptu things, you know, weekends, nights, whatever. You know, if I'm not in the middle of something, some of my family or whatever, I like working with you. I like helping fellow motivated entrepreneurs grow. So private coaching is a thing, okay? And then sales training on site with your team, either through a sales keynote or I'm working with a company now, training. I got seven salespeople, uh, a couple of uh, inside salespeople, a systems engineer, so 10 people, you know. So I'm on site with them for a day. It's 90 days of ongoing support, so it sticks, right? And then coaching with the sales manager. If you need that, I do that as well. So, again, hit the Contact Us page and let's talk And because uh, that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, depending on your needs, we'll quote that out, 
If it's in your budget, we'll get started. Okay, but it's the same. Short-term engagement that can be renewed. And a lot of times it is renewed, but you don't have to start off with some onerous, you know, high-dollar annual thing. Uh, let's, let's walk before we run. All right? Thanks for listening. I'll go sell something.